Bones are the vital component of human skeleton. A human newborn baby takes birth with approximately 300 bones where the adult die off with having 206 bones. This 206 bone can also be divided into two compartments. The first group of bones are those which are present at the mid axis of body and they are known as the axial bone and the skeletal is known as the axial skeletal. The another group is of those bones which are present parallel to the mid axis and this group is known as the appendicular bone system or a skeleton. So this appendicular bone system composed around 126 bone where the axial skeleton composed of the 80 bones. Now the axial skeleton composed the bones of head, the ribs, the sternum, hyoid bone as well as the vertebrae where the appendicular skeleton composed the bones of limb. Clear? So let's look on the axial skeleton first. So axial skeleton composed of 80 bones among which the 8 bones is of cranium, 14 bones is of the facial bones, the 6 are the ear ossicle, 1 hyoid and 1 sternum present where the 24 ribs and 26 vertebras are comes under the account of axial skeleton. The cranial skeleton or a cranial vault is formed by one frontal bone, two parietal bone, two temporal bone, one occipital bone, one sphenoid and one hypoid. So the bone present at a forward direction that is the frontal bone, the bone backward is the occipital bone and the bone situated lateral to the ear are the temporal bone, two temporal bones are present here. Above that, there are two parietal bone present. The side eyes is the sphenoid bone, and the bone who makes the cavity for eye is known as the ethmoid bone. Now, this cranial bone are joined together with the help of suture, which are the fibrous joints. So, the joint of the suture present in between the frontal and the parietal bone that is known as the coronal suture. That suture is known as the coronal suture, where the suture present in between the occiput and the parietal bone, they are known as a lamboid suture. The suture present in between the temporal and the parietal, that is known as a square suture, where the suture present in between two parietal bones, they are known as the sagittal suture. So let's look forward. So here you can see the superior view of the cranium. Here what we find that this is this is the frontal bone, this one is occipital and these two are the right and left parietal bone. So here you can find the frontal bone and the parietal bone are joined together with a fibrous joint which is, which is known as the coronal suture where behind the parietal bone conjoined with the occipital bone with the help of the lumboid suture and the suture present in between the two, this two parietal bone that is known as this sagittal suture. Clear? Let's look next. Before that, remember a thing that in the newborn babies, there is presence of frontal anterior and the posterior frontal. The frontal are the space in between the sutures which help to grow the skull. So let's look on the facial bones now. As we discuss here that the number of facial bones is 14. Among them, two are nasal, two lacrimal, two palatine. To zygomaticus, to inferior nasal concha, to maxilla, one mandible and one bomba is present. So let's look here and identify the bones. So here there is a presence of a nasal bone, two nasals are there. Here at the groove of nasal, along with the ethmoid, there is the presence of the lacrimal bone. Here you can find a maxillary bone. And the arch-like bone present here is the bone of the zygomaticus. And zygomaticus is important for our smile. This is the bone who make our smile better. The lower jaw is basically known as the mandible. Here the presence of the vomer bone present. And the bones here are the inferior nasal concha and the palatine bone is the posteriorly elongated afterward the maxilla. So okay, you can find the palatine bone here as well as here also if the cavity is larger. So let's look further. So here there is a position of a facial bone. So you can find the palatine bone behind the maxilla. 
This is the lacrimal bone which is the part of the eye cavity or optic cavity. A work of the lacrimal bone is giving the side to run off the lacrimal duct which is the tear duct. The next one is the zygomaticus bone. Here is the maxillary bone. Here is the mandible. Inferior nasal conch are situated here. This is the warmer. Right. So here I think we cover all the bones except the nasal bone. Clear? So these are the 14 nasal bones present over here. So here you find a bone present at the level of neck. Behind, below that, the thyroid cartilage takes place and that is the hyoid bone. Hyoid bone is also a vital for the holding of the Now let's look on a sternum. So sternum can be divided into three components. The superior one is known as a manubrium. The middle one is known as a body of sternum. And the lower one is known as the seboid process. Now, the junction between the body of sternum and the manubrium is known as the manubriosternal junction, where the junction between the body of sternum and the xiphoid process is known as the xiphisternal junction. The sternum is, makes a vital role to the articulation of ribs as well as the clavicle. But the clavicle is a part of a pendicular skeleton, where the ribs are the part of the axial skeleton. Now, rib joints anteriorly with the sternum, where the posteriorly with the vertebra. So the junction between the ribs and the body of sternum composed of the cartilaginous joint, the cartilaginous junction and that is known as the costochondral junction where the costo is referred for a rib and the chondral is referred to the cartilage. So let's look further. So afterward what we find that the 12 pair of ribs are situated jointed with the sternum. Among them, the seven ribs are directly attached to the sternum anteriorly. The next three, seven, uh, eight, nine, and ten, are indirectly attached with the seventh one, and the eleventh and twelfth are floating ribs, which are non joint anteriorly. But these all twelve ribs are articulated with the vertebras on a posterior. So now the very interesting thing is that the first rib which is known as a cervical rib is present horizontally where it gives the superior as well as the inferior surface right and also it gives the anterior as well as posterior border and remaining all the ribs gives attached on the vertical position so it will give the anterior and posterior surface where the superior as well as the inferior body. So this is the difference between the cervical rib or you can say first rib and among the other ribs. Now let's look on a vertebral column. So vertebral column gives the attachment to the ribs at a posterior level. Here the vertebral column can be divided according to their position. The vertebras present at the level of neck they are known as the cervical vertebras and the number of cervical vertebras is seven. Among them, the first vertebrae is known as the atlas, where the second vertebrae is known as the axis. So the C1 is representative for the atlas, where C2 is the representative of an axis. Afterward, the vertebrae give the articulation to the ribs. They are known as the thoracic 12 vertebrae. Clear? So there are 12 thoracic vertebrae present. Below that, there is L5. Sacrum are also five in a number and the boxes are four in the child. The number of this vertebra in the infants is around 33. But at the adulthood, the ossification and the fusion takes place and the sacral five sacral component join together and form a single sacral bone as well as the coccyx will also lead to join together. And the number reduced into the 26. So here we finish with the vertebrates. So next one is the perpendicular bones or appendicular skeleton. So the appendicular skeleton composed of 30 bones in each limb as well as two of the pectoral gridles and two pelvic ribs. So now let's look on the upper limb first. So the upper limb composed of about 68 bones. Among the 68 bones, 34 of the left side and 34 of the right side. So we will study only of one side 34 bones which are seen on the other side as well. Among them 
the two bones are of pectoral griddle. So pectoral griddle is formed by the scapula and the clavicle. So this clavicle and the scapula gives the junction of the upper limb with the thoracic cavity. At the level of scapula with the glenoid cavity, a junction of the humerus circle, so this bone is the humerus, these two are the radius and the ulna. The radius is the lateral bone where the ulna is the medial bone. Afterward, it is also divided, uh, afterward this continue as the 8 carpal, 5 metacarpal and 14 phalanx. So this 14 phalanx can be also divided into the distal, proximal and the intermediate phalanx. So digit, the first digit only consists of two phalanx which is the distal and the proximal phalanx. Let us look at the carpal now. So the eight carpals are present into two rows, the proximal as well as the distal. If you start from the lower row or a proximal row from the lateral direction and goes into the clockwise circulation, the bones are comes like the scaphoid followed by the lunate, followed by the triculateral, afterward the pisiform comes, pisiform followed to the hamate, hamate followed the capitate, capitate followed trapezoid and trapezoid followed by the trapezium. So here that is the look of the bones. So we, if we start from the lateral side, lateral proximal row and goes into the clockwise direction, this is the sequence of the carpus. Let's look on a lower limb now. So lower limb consists of two bones. The 62 bone can be divided into 31-31 on each side. Among this 31, a one bone is of the pelvic griddle and the 30 are the lower limb. So, in the lower limb, we find a longest bone of body that is known as a femur. Here, the lateral one is the fibula and the medial one is the tibia. So, if we correlate, the fibula is the homologous with the radius because the radius was also a lateral one, where the tibia is homologous to the ulna. Why? Because ulna is also the medial one. So afterward, what we find that there is seven tarsal present, five metatarsal present, and fourteen phalanx are present. So phalanx is also divided into the distal, proximal, and the intermediate. Or the hip bone is the bone of a pelvic griddle. So hip bone is independently formed by three fusion of three bones. The upper one is known as ilium, the anterior is the pubis and the posterior is of the ischia. So this is all about the lower. So let's look on the tarsals now. So there are seven tarsals present in the lower limb. So here the heel bone is known as the calcaneus. This is the first tarsal. The above the calcaneus bone present is known as a talus. Front side of the talus there is a navicular present. The lateral one, the most lateral part of the tarsal is known as a cuboidal one and these three are known as a cuneiforms. The cuneiforms are further can be divided into the medial, lateral and the middle. So this is all about the bony anatomy of a human.